I know you likely saw the title of this video and thought, what kind of clickbait is this? I can assure you that there is some value to be gained in this video. For some, it may be information that you already know, or at least already assumed, but I decided to go ahead and quantify it anyways. Putting a Pentium G4520 with the GTX 1080 is clearly a bad idea, but that's exactly the point of this video, as well as my new series, which is appropriately named Stupid, showing tech undermining present intellectual discourse. I want to take the obvious and assumed ideas, nay even the dumbest tech-related concepts, and bring them to light in a video no matter how arbitrary or strange they may be. It's an idea that was prompted when I used a 650 watt power supply in my X99 Overkill build to power two 1080s and a 1070 physics card. Should anyone else do that? No. Was it fine? 100%. So while pairing a Pentium and a top-of-the-line GPU together is clearly a dumb concept, let's see exactly what we can learn from that process. To begin, it was out with the old and in with the new, which meant that I had to remove my trusted i7-6700K running at a smooth 4.4 GHz and put in this dual-core, non-hyper-threaded 3.6 GHz chip which also lacks any turbo boost and has 5 less megabytes of cache. But hey, it has the same integrated GPU as the 6700K which is nice. My benchmarking process remained identical to what I did with the 6700K installed. Take the games, put them at near highest detail settings, and find out the results at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. For this experiment, we have a grand total of seven different games to compare data on with the 6700K versus the G4520. However, with four of the seven, I tested them both in DirectX 11 and 12. So let's start off with the first game, Ashes of the Singularity. The CPU bottleneck from the dual-core proc is incredibly apparent here. In DX11, the G4520 managed 25 FPS in all three resolution settings, a drop between 40 to 60% from the 6700K. The average FPS is the same across the board because the 1080 can clearly manage more, but the CPU just won't let it go any higher. DX12 is the same story with the FPS going up about 5 frames across the board, but still an intense decline from its 8-threaded counterpart. Moving on to the second game, Deus Ex, is where things take a different turn. In DX11, there's a 25% loss at 1080p, a 2% loss at 1440p, and only a less than 1% delta between the 6700K and G4520 at 4K. DX12 gives a harsher result to 1080p and 1440p on the G4520 with a 38 and 26% loss respectively, but at 4K, the G4520 actually edged out the 6700K by an inconsequential 0.2 FPS. Moving on to Grand Theft Auto V, we find the same strange story. There's a 30 plus percentage drop off in 1080p and 1440p and basically no result difference at 4K for the Pentium. Next is Hitman in DX11, which finally does punish the dual core again at 2160p, but still significantly less than the two lower resolutions. But there's a near 50% drop off regardless, with each result only bringing in about 40 or so frames per second. DX12 and Hitman is the same exact story, no better results here as was found in the case of Ashes of the Singularity. It's a roughly 40 FPS cap for the GTX 1080, which is a significant underperformance from the i7. Metro Last Light brings back the negligible 4K gaming difference with a less than half a frame per second difference between the two processors. And you can still see the G4520 struggles to keep up at the lower reses. Rise of the Tomb Raider DX11 shows the G4520 performing slightly better at 4K, but a 27% and 40% hit at 1440 and 1080p respectively. DX12 hurts the Pentium a bit more with it losing to the 6700K by 4 FPS at 4K and roughly the same percentage points loss elsewhere. And then the final game, The Witcher 3. With Hairworks on, at 4K there's less than a 1 FPS delta between the two chips, but that increases to 7% when Hairworks is turned off. And then again, as has been the narrative throughout the entire benchmarking process, the G4520 gets slaughtered at 1080p and 1440p. Now let's break this down a little here. What exactly is going on? Is getting a Pentium the best value 4K CPU and you shouldn't spring for a quad core? Well, 
not so fast Freakazoid. While the frame rate data may look promising in many games, it's not the entire story. In the games where it looks like the Pentium does just as well in terms of frames per second, the frame timings were all over the place like a frantic raccoon. It was hardly a smooth experience, with micro stutter and sometimes even a complete lockup of the game taking place. Also keep in mind most of these games aren't traditionally CPU bound titles such as City Skylines, which would likely make this conversation completely null and void anyways. The interesting thing that I'm taking away from this is just how much 4K taxes GPUs to the point that even the 1080 will become a bottleneck in a system that only hosts a dual core processor. Just take this data from MSI Afterburner for an example. Running my benchmark test in Hitman at 1080p, then 1440p, and then 4K yielded significantly higher usage of the GPU each time regardless of the CPU being basically pegged to 100% during the entire experience. While the CPU may be a bottleneck, it also appears that the resolution that you're running your game at can also make a difference in how much power you're going to draw from your GPU, if indeed your CPU is limiting your system. You obviously won't get better frame rates from upping the resolution, but you'll appear to draw out more of the graphics card's potential. Look, I think we all knew the conclusion going into this video. A Pentium G4520 plus a GTX 1080 is a terrible idea. However, I wasn't expecting the frame rate data to show what it did in certain games at 4K. It's an interesting conclusion to a completely impractical setup. But for me, that's kind of the point of the Stupid series, examining ideas that really have no place in the real world just to see what happens, or undermining present intellectual discourse, as it were. And also, to be clear, this isn't the end of my testing with the Pentium or other CPUs for that matter. I'll have a much more relevant and in-depth video coming out on the various levels of Intel CPUs and their bottlenecking capacities for varying levels of GPUs, so be sure to subscribe to stay tuned for that one. However, with all of that said, I want to give a massive thank you to Wootware for sponsoring not only this video, but also my future CPU examination videos. If you're in South Africa, WooWare has everything you'll need to build an entirely practical PC, so maybe something like an i5 with a GTX 1060. Their customer service is incredibly caring and responsive, and their prices are hard to beat. So if you're in South Africa and looking to upgrade your PC, head on over to wootware.co.za to woot it up. The link is in the video description. So that wraps it up for episode 1 of the Stupid series. Like this video if you found it thought-provoking? I normally say helpful, but I really don't think this should be helpful to anyone because if you're in the situation where this is relevant information, you really should be re-examining your PC purchasing decisions. Regardless, dislike it if you're against the notion of testing out dumb ideas because you already know how it'll turn out, which it's fair enough. I'd also really appreciate it if you guys could leave a comment down below with your ideas for things that you want me to check out in future episodes. I have, a, I have several more ideas lined up, but it's always great to get feedback from my audience. And again, you can subscribe to stay up to date on all of my tech-related content, helpful or otherwise, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.